Life is a lot simpler than what's going on in most of our heads. Most of it's imaginary. Some of the real villains of the world, the ones that are the really, really nasty pieces of stuff. Is that something else going on? Is it just the atmosphere or are there poltergeists and demons under the bed? Okie dokie, so we are into another episode, and this series in the room is becoming gigantous, absolutely massive, unbelievably a, a, a so. A word that comes to mind is gargantuan, because that's gargantuan. what I am. Gargantuan. I am gargantuan Garvin. Gargoyle. Actually, gargoyle Garvin has even been used in the past as a kid. Gargantuan and gargoyle. A Garvin Electric was a nickname because I used to run around clapping my hands and getting all excited about things and probably the passion and the energy that was in me trying to get out and other people thought that guy is just nuts. Stay, stay away from him. And on the subject of what this one is about, you, I think you're going to call it Monsters. Monsters. One of my, one of my nicknames was Herman Munster because I look like him. I've always been this big looming character but in the good old days of when I was young, wearing all the black sort of gothic punk type outfits and looking and long hair, I look like Herman Munster, which nearly gets us onto the subject of Frankenstein. Ah, yes. <laughs> Who was a man of many parts, literally, because he was put together from various different component parts. And of course, the replacement of Frankenstein's monster now is the robot and the android and the fear of the robots taking over the world and not being able to be controlled. Ah, but the second set of parts now come with warranty as the first set of parts you had to dig up out of so God knows where. And the assembly in the factory, you could go... Don't know whether there's much social distancing going on there, <laughs> and God only knows what the work conditions were. But, you know, assembly of one, kickstarted the industry, we've gone a little bit mechanical, and now we're popping them out like there's no tomorrow with an ISO 9000 standard. And that was just because we were talking about grandmas with their children <laughs> from a few I, weeks ago. <laughs> grandmas and her children. Oh, oh, no, 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 of course. The egg within the egg within the, within the body. Which so, brings you up to alien. Alien, Wait. I know, and again, is that a mo uh, monsters? It is uh, a monster, this, yeah. This yeah. the only you, you said we're going to be talking about monsters. And I go monsters. I, I don't know anything about monsters, and then well, uh, one, one song. Da, 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 it's one song, song popped into my mind, and it was called what was it Monsters and Super Creeps? Scary Monsters and Super Creeps by David Bowie. Scary Monsters, monsters. two words that normally go together. And I think the reason why is that most of us are always told about the monsters that we should be frightened of and the things that were hidden in the cupboard that might come out and get you or the things under the bed that if you looked underneath, you'd oh, be God scared Almighty. to have a look at. Bring it back to horror. Seriously. Yeah. I remember having my uh, little one bed um, box room that there was barely a light. Well, turn the light on and there was nothing but shadows, back to what we are talking about, shadows, shadows in the room. Everywhere you looked, you could, there was so little light that your mind would play tricks on you and everything seemed to move and grow and lean forward and breed. And then you start to hear noises in the house that doesn't exist. The house starts to breed. That's yeah. what will worry you be, be about being in a big, huge house. If you stop and start to listen, you will hear the noises that are there the whole time but it's only when it's empty do you actually hear it when you have a full house and you've got the tv on you don't hear the breathing of what's around you and and then you start going do you have to worry about this breathing is that something else going on is it just the atmosphere or are there poltergeists and demons under the bed and now you're going i'm gonna have to check every bed now because of what you just said well we do it I've got my little log cabin, which I'm sitting in at the moment, and we also have a little house that we live in. And as, you, as you're sitting there reading, you can hear these other noises, and then you hear the creaking upstairs as the, as the temperature of the room changes. But on here, quite often you hear the pitter-patter of feet crawling across the roof. That's rats, and you're George, kind of going, rats. You get, 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 the, get the fucking termite men No, the, or, these, uh, are, these are flying rats. They're pigeons, doves, and crows that all live around here, no, and a, a few flying, starlings. A flying rat is a bat and we had that conversation bat. last week where I, <laughs> I had to chase a bat around the kitchen I didn't know what to do with it I didn't have any tools for the job I didn't know how to get it out the window I didn't know how it got in the window but I mean and the panic that set in I was thinking Dracula reincarnates yeah we all see something with eight legs 
scurrying across your floor that's more scared of us will have more screams going, especially with an elephant in the room, than anybody else. <laughs> the brings little, you, brings me back to Australia. When you say something with eight eggs that has a wearing a big fur coat that can jump six foot in the air and bite you in the arse and put you in the hospital, I'm going, that's not a spider. The little daddy long legs we might have here in this back garden is fine and we run a mile, but things with fur coats and lots of eyes with attitude looking at you and, and it knows who's boss, that is scary. That's a micro monster. So let's have a look at the definition of monster. We've kind of got a good idea of it there. It's a large, ugly and frightening imaginary creature, such as a wolf or a giant or a mammoth or a colossus, whatever that is. And inhumanely cruel or wicked person, brute, fiend, beast, ogre, devil, demon and barbarian. Would you be a barbarian, Garvin? I think my Especially with your size and no, everything else. I, I, I know in, the, like, in my DNA, if we can uncode it and if we looked a little bit deeper, we're going to find from Normans to Vikings, and I'm sure a bunch of them are barbarian in some way or form. And I mean, my, my general feel is that like, based on the height of, of the teenage girls these days and, and the average height in this country, the barbarians are back. The Vikings are are back. It's it's gone full circle. We've gone through Leprechaun and God knows what. The Irish, average Irish, are now hitting the five tens and five and six foot. They're not five foot one leprechauns anymore. They're a force to be reckoned with. They're we're barbarians. I know we are. And the, but the barbarians of today, you go, are, are, when you say ugly, I mean. I think the barbarians conquered half the planet. I mean, they were organized. They might be ruthless, but they, they, had, they had purpose and they were monsters to those poor serfs and, and, and you know, populists that were being uh, dominated by them. Actually, that, that reminds me now of, of more the caricature of, of, of uh, Dracula and like, you know, many a film and saying the Lord of Transylvania and it was based maybe on this real life character uh, in the sense of the overlord that he was and how brutal he was in terms of conquering those around him and his enemies that he had he now subsequently is immortalized in fiction or is he no was he imaginary was he real and is the real version of him being monsterized into history and storytelling in many ways, they're probably monsterized and, and formed. They become myth mythical characters and like dragons, although some people say they were dragons, but they're mythical objects that are there to terrorize people. In fact, even looking over the last uh, century of history, there are certain monsters and beasts that are actually being created, such as the, the Russians who were the Soviets or the Nazis and all those, because... We were on the other side, and they were the other, and they were the enemy, and they were the ones that we were fighting against. doesn't matter what their politics are and things like that. No, Some the enemy, the are, that's it. The enemy is the, the enemy. monster. Yeah, the, the enemy, enemy is the, the monster. The enemy is the monster. The monster. The, when I heard the word monster, I didn't, I was going, Mon monsters. The, no, demons, perhaps. Demons. And I was thinking demons, I've got yeah. evil. And that was not the words, e so evil and demon, they go together, but is a person evil is a person that we know adult well, Hitler could have been but or is yeah. it demonic or is it is that something to do with hell hell but if Earth? you can if you can demonize somebody in other words make them turn them into a monster make you know so that any anything about them would seem to be horrendous or horrifying that you know i mean the, the germans in the first world war not the first world war second world war did that to the jews they demonized the jews put everybody against they hadn't done anything they just wanted an enemy that they could go against. In in after the after the war, the Russians suddenly became the enemy for us because we were in the West, uh, and obviously we became their demons because we were in the West again. <laughs> they were in the East. Um, so you just turn once you if if you vilify somebody, turn them into a villain, turn them into someone nasty, then you'll actually stir up all the emotions of your population to go against them. Uh, so, and that's what's been happening here. And now we're finding ourselves returning to areas that um, we seem to be repeating the past through history the vilification. Repeating. History no, repeating I, I, itself. I don't yeah. like going too deep because I'm saying the history. To me, I'm living in the now. And I know we've well, learned me, from the past. Let uh, me talk about uh, some of the real villains of the world. The ones that are the really, really nasty pieces of stuff. Okay. And this this will send a shudder down your spine. I don't want to shudder down well, my spine. We are going to. I'm we have to. One hundred and one Dalmatians. We, we and have the to explore. Within. 
<laughs> these villains are classed as being a rude or badly behaved person, typically oh, oh, a child, me. the villain, of, a rascal, the villain imp- of the podcast, Garvin, <laughs> the villain of the, the podcast, the, the rascal, yeah. childlike individual. He keeps on putting in. He's a that villain. little wretch. That's it. No. The rogue. The little. Well, not, de- and again, I the know, devil comes I'm, up I'm, again. I'm, I'm no German or Austrian chap with a little tash. Oh no! no ev- I'm no everybody villain. has. <laughs> everybody no, has I, these I, little I, villains. I was going to say, George, was I'd be more concerned with the now and the inner villain within us, the demon, the inner demon. Yes. It's the, the villain within. The demon within, the monster within. Not that it needs to have 85 legs and God knows what. It's what is stopping us being ourselves. What is making yeah. us, what's causing that fear, that fright, that, that bunny rabbit in the headlights. What's, Absolutely. What is stopping us it becoming something else? It put the fear else? into the American fear of God government. Into you. Yeah, it put, the, it put the fear of God into the American government after the First and Second World War that they started using psychologists to try and work out how do we tackle the villain inside every individual person who could suddenly explode into this horrible monster we have and to take put over them in the a world. Cell in their head. So you have to put fluoride into their yeah. toothpaste and into their water to, to actually calm them uh, that'll down. only get a percentage and most of them don't sort of brush their teeth anyway so yeah, well, I mean, they're it, not drinking see? water they're drinking whiskey so I mean all, all the drunk toothless bunch are running around with their with their where we're all still intact and all yeah. they have to do is open their mouth and they look like a horrible monster already and you're kind of going ah <laughs> so, 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 weird. so the this, demon is it. within the demon, the within, demon within as opposed to the villain of the past it's it's I think I think I, I know you're trying to give us a little bit of a history lesson and and, and that type of thing but in terms of how does that affect you or me now in a part of the world of which, you know, it, it has no... Well, we don't... There, there's politics out there, and I find that too frightening at times because I can't control it to that it's, extent. Yeah. It's and again, not it something... Brings I can in. barely control me going to the shop. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's a problem because what's happening is that when you look at those things, they look so big and ginormous and so that they're not controllable. And what we need to do is to find things that are small and manageable. That's we it. also had that kind of problem with what we were doing now. We've, we've, been, we've set on a journey to do all these podcasts and these video blogs and all the other bits and pieces to do with marketing. And actually, when we started off, we kind of went, oh, this is horrible. It's it's a monster of a thing that we have. It's a, it's monster, a monster task. task. Now, there you go. Now we got a, a monster task. I don't task. have a monster truck, but we know a there's monster a monster task. set of tasks ahead. And we are frightened of 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 just to the, such an extent we nearly can't start. And and that's the sort of monster I'm, I'm yeah. thinking at the moment that I can relate to in the short term as opposed to don't go into the graveyard at night. God knows what's in there. I wouldn't be going anyway. Not when yeah. I have a secure core crew this, in, in This is don't go into the social media at night. <laughs> don't and go into the social media because there's trolls in there. There's, there's trolls in there, yeah. There's trolls in there. There's, there's all these ugly imaginary Ogres. creatures in there. Ogres and trolls and... And, and no, and, and demons of all type, and, and, and witches. Well, I, now, I I actually would be more thoughtful of if you can't think of it, it doesn't exist. But if you can yes. think of it, there's all these stories, and all these stories of science and fiction and fantasy, in fact, are starting to run together. You've got white witches. The witches were were, were witches until they became doctors, and then you got a witch doctor to get a hybrid of the two. But ultimately, you're going. We couldn't. You know, is herbal medicine a witch-like thing? I just you're using plants and and I actually one thing reminds me is my wife goes to this um, I don't know if the doctor, but anyway, it's like an aura thing. You go, you feel better. It's a, it's a type of science where she does this, puts her hands over you and she checks out your chakras. Reiki, Reiki, that's the one. I'm going, yeah. I'm going, mother of God, what the feck? Can I charge seventy-five quid for five minutes of that? And I go, no, I am sceptical, but she comes home tipping the life fantastic, feels a million dollars afterwards, and I'm going, and I'm going to give a speech about aura anyway. So now all these things are aligning, and you, you're starting to well, question. Yeah, I try to have, I was, you know, because I, I, my sisters are into the same kind of thing, and I know other people, and they also have rocks and stones and things and say there's, there, there's things that come from there these. There's energy kind of going, in Energy coming. But then the problem is that you kind of go, Okay, well, look at your watch, and it says it's a quartz, and the quartz has a pulse, and it actually keeps it in time. I don't even have a watch. I don't know the time. The time is now. The time is now. 
But again, what's interesting is there seems to be a frequency coming from that, which kind of, you kind of go, all right, okay. And there's a frequency in the earth and there's a frequency in our brain, which is about 7.8 something hertz or something. And you kind of go, right, okay, so there are frequencies. And when we play music, there are frequencies and stuff. like that. So they're talking into those kind of energies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think what what is important is that we suddenly start to realize that a lot of the stuff that we are being made fearful of is because we don't understand. Yeah, so quite often says. we have to try and understand. And, and the best way to out, understand... Frankenstein was misunderstood. Understood. Yeah, because if and you watch... It wasn't Frankenstein, which... I, that's the misconception. It's which one was the monster. Yeah. Frankenstein was the doctor. The monster was... Well, don't know what his name was. No, I don't, how do you got a name? It's just the monster, the man. Well, the, 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 it, in the story, in every single version of the story you see, the monster... Uh, is, is trying to find out and discover himself exactly the same as we individually are as well. And he's trying to be accepted as a person because he is a person. And now what's happened is, is that the community who become fearful because he's such a big guy and they think he's going to be nasty. In the end, the monster is the actually the people. The monster. The monster. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. The mon and, and that's the thing, the ugly. It, it, like, um, it's not that they're imaginary creatures anymore. Actually, the whole point here is is it imaginary? It's not a monster, if it's in front of you, is not imaginary. imaginary it's no. made real. It's manifested. It's horror. And then it really brings you to, you know, if you believe in one, you know, God, do you believe in the anti in the sense of, is it for good, there is evil, for, there, for there's angelic, there's demonic, for there's, it's just good and evil, it's bad, bad and indifferent, it's, 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 made, what, it's what is made real. We, I don't understand some people going to the movies and watching these mother of God horrors, and you're, it's, like, it's all very well getting on a roller coaster and getting that adrenaline rush, that's, that's hard to me, but to go and watch this blood-curdling Friday the 13th on steroids, mutilating this Yo, know, I, I don't know what that is. I, that, that's, it's horrific even watching it. And the, thing, the, the problem is, is that when, when people do watch that kind of stuff, they get desensitised. Now, I remember uh, I was 18, 19. I went to the cinema to see a movie. It was like a B-movie type thing. But the very opening scene was that these people were in Vietnam and they'd been captured. And I'm not sure if there's a Japanese person there or something, but uh, they had a samurai sword and they basically executed some of the people. And for the first time, I saw a decapitation on screen. Now we're so used to it, it doesn't cause us any problems. But my reaction at that point was, oh my, Can't I actually almost problems. felt sick. My conversation you know, last night with the young lad was, here's PS5 and here's the games coming down the line with it and oh, and we're, we're always horrified by the fact that we have, we're buying these games or no he's buying them himself he's buying he is, all his money that ever he gets he saves and buys this but we're going are we good parents letting them have access to these to games which are you know four dimension real time real pay and it's as you said it might be desensitizing people but we're, we're, we know he has empathy and we know, we're assuming that he's going to be a normal kid actually he got his results yesterday for his intercer got 10 straight A's and going we can't even we can't even give out because so so the strange thing is we want to be able to blame something else so you yes. can, we stop him and prevent him from doing just what we consider a waste of time playing these online games that could lead to the horror of desensitization and lack of empathy. But the, actually, but the, he's a well rounded lad, and that's just yeah. escapism. No, what, what I found, because I, I, I know they had the same problem with my two lads now, they're, they're heading, one's in their 30s, the other one's heading in that sort of direction. Uh, so it's quite some time ago, but they, they still play games. But they could turn around and say to me, But dad, you still watch films. It's just that your film is our game now. That's and it. one of the things I, I found very interesting was this kind of, you kind of go, oh, they're just stuck on the computer. They're not getting to talk to people. He has a social group that's so big. That's it's it. unbelievable. I, uh, our argument is one dimensional out the window. Every time we try to have a with him, we're going, get off the device. And, and I'm, I'm on a device while telling him to get off one. I'm here talking to you on another one and another one. And yeah. I don't go back. Uh, everything I, I, when I move from TV to PC to camera to back again. And, and I'm on it more than he is. Now, yeah. and, I'm, and actually, as you said, what we're doing is very one dimensional and maybe one on one. And they are role playing, gamifying, team building. They're out there yeah. architecturally designing and if not winning wars by the sounds of it I don't know but the horror is we just wanted to get out and get some air but strange enough didn't damage me 
in the past I did feck all I was locked in a room playing toy soldiers but I mean and I, I wish I had what he has I'd have a bit of more crack well one of the things that's quite interesting watch, having watched my sons play their war games they go off as a crew and start and, and form teams and help one another through the landscape that they're in and there's an enemy coming in the other direction and they're fighting them they're normally talking and chit chat in the same way that maybe soldiers would be mm-hmm. on the ground because most of the time they're not actually fighting. Most of the time they're actually yeah, just going crack. around and running and having yeah. a yeah, having a good crack. It's only the occasionally they somebody gets shot out and they're all kind of go they they get a bit tense and they kind of go right okay. No, for and a, then they solve a one another. Different another. perception. My, my poor son is getting shot, shot up, blown up, cut up, you know, run over every other day of the week, and we're going. We don't even know. I, I, yes. I, I won't let him go to the bloody shops and back with a fucking guard. And then yeah. I hear, and I said, so they're out in this other world, this universe of interaction with unknowns, knowns, friends and buddies and killing and, and, then, re, and then respawning and, and, and strategically role playing. And uh, all I think is, is, is in the room, in the dark with the monsters under the bed and the shadows in the corner. Well, well you, we, we talked about the, uh, the role, role change uh, of parent and, and child kind of thing. Now, my son comes round to me and he goes, oh, dad, you, you shouldn't do da, 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 da. And I'm kind of going, well, I've been using computers. Yeah, but, you, you know, there are things that can happen. He's more scared of what I'm doing on the computer every day than what he's doing. Because he says, but I know how to control it. And obviously you don't. He's in a controlled environment. They're, yes. in, they're in the framework of that game. They're not, uh, whatever gets in and out is, is, is a certain amount of control of membership or who it is. You may, some might be some... People pretend to be someone else, but it's within that framework. We're outside that framework. Other things can happen. You know, we, we talked before about, you know, your spam or viruses or God knows what. We download something by accident. or But there's an element. This is the portal to the universe of this yeah. planet, of the Internet and everybody in it that you can, that you can, int- that can rob you. That can clone you, that can that, that can stalk you, and all. It's strange. I haven't left the damn room. Well, yeah, and this is it. We, I mean, we've been we've been in in a form of self isolation through our conversations, talking to one another. Now, on 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 the on the plus side, what's happened is that we're we're able to have a chat constantly about what we're doing, and we're bouncing ideas around, which is helping us to to appreciate what we need to do, work things out and cut things down so they don't become such big tasks by the way that we're having a conversation. We're also giving each other permission to have those times when we break, when we realise if we're left to our own devices, we could be working our socks off and not taking a break and becoming quite seriously ill. So we could lose that balance. So this kind of conversation is actually extremely useful. But on the other side of it, We know that the technologies are being designed in such a way that they want to hear what we're saying. They want to see what we look like so that through facial recognition, they want to be able to look at the emotions that we're sharing so they can start pumping to us individual uh, things to go and buy all the time. But now now we've mentioned the the Sims game before. So we are becoming... The material the sim. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the Skynet, the, 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 the internet consciousness is tracking our every move through these social media super companies of, of source. So they have our geo tracking. We're going to have our medical details. You know, we mentioned I am not a number as one of our, our things. And the numbers that we are, they have my date of birth, they'll have my date of death. They're going to have my social security number in the middle, my tax number, my bank number, my phone number. And, and I. I and then they're going to have the measure of me, my statistics of how big or how small or how t- tall or what I eat, what I consume, and digitize it all to the ones and zeros of my personality and predictability thereof. Well, you, you've seen my log cabin and you've seen I have a whole collection of books. I've got a whole collection of CDs, a whole complexion, collection of, of vinyls in the corner there. And you suddenly start to realise, hang on, the way things are being done, I don't need to have any of those because it's all digital. I can just look at it on a screen. So what they're trying to do is to get us off the roads next. So they kind of go, well, if we automate all the cars, then you won't need to drive, which would make it boring. So you can get from A to B. Well, actually, you don't need cars because you don't need to go to A to B because we can just keep you in touch one another through the Internet. So the one thing that jumped into my mind there, though, it's the horror, the horror of a simple thing that I've lost broadband. Like, as soon as electricity goes out here, 
we're going. Actually, I remember being in a restaurant with a friend of mine uh, just before Christmas gone, and I don't know what we were talking about. It was before even this pandemic or any mention thereof. But we were probably talking about various zombie films and God knows what. And it's not so much the zombies. It's this when the power goes off. Off. How far are we away from starving to death? Nothing has been delivered. Nothing is moving. Even the pandemic started to give you a little bit of a taste of that. And what we were realizing was the criminals were armed and we weren't. And yeah. what was the new world order was you need to get armed. I, I mean, in the next year, I better go off and get a couple of guns. I better get the kids, get the kids sort of trained up. They're probably already marksmen from the gaming they're doing. But that aside, it becomes, I've got to go out there and be the provider, find the meat animals grow veg never mind if you manage to successfully do that it's build a tall wall because someone else is going to want it and it's a game of who's for armed is going to survive past six weeks don't worry about zombification yeah the interesting thing is that i i because i know that, that that those are the sort of things that i would have been fearful about and would have been quite frightened and I know that when I was teaching in the schools, I'd say, in the college rather, I'd be saying, oh, what happens when the lorries don't come? They won't be able to get to Sainsbury's. They won't be able to get Tesco's. But actually, the pandemic has also demonstrated that the infrastructure is fairly solid. No, no, no. It's, that was the thing. For a few weeks there, where we were, and we're in the country, which is fine, because there, there was no one in the shops. So therefore, yeah. even the, you know, there were no queues. I didn't re- we thought that was normal until you looked at the TV and suddenly realised that in London town, where you've got a density of population, there, there's 200 going, mm-hmm. they're, yep. no, they're, they're, they're bumping into each other and they're panic buying and they don't even have a flat to, pay, to, to put the 47 yep. bags of toilet rolls into. Yep. You know, we... There was a little bit of panic and we said, ah, it'd be all grand. But a couple of weeks further in, we're starting to go, actually, the tr- it's not, the problem is not here. It may not get to Ireland at all because the trucks may not come from France. And yeah. if they're all backed up yeah. and stacked up, it's, it's, it's when does it stop? Now, Ireland is a country that we could have just grown our own, that we were exporting more. We've no cows to keep us going till now till doomsday. But, but that aside, it's, were we just going to be pushed back to being an agricultural society literally overnight? And now the farmers who are the poorest are going to become the wealthiest on the basis of they have the meat and grass and the land. But now you're going to have to protect it. You're going to have to get every fucking film you've seen out there says you need to be armed. It's Mad Max territory. You're going to have to protect it because the masses have a bog what's going on, have nowhere at all, well, aren't able to feed themselves, fend for themselves, have no food, no money, and it's just how long they're going to survive. And this is where things are going ah, to be but quite there's, monstrous. There, there's quite something quite interesting because the assumption is, is that everybody else except for you understands what the problem is. And, and and I think that beca- and and so we all turn everybody else into zombies. The community out there is a zombie force that's coming to get us. They have no rationale. They have no way of thinking because they're they just can't there to eat you. They contribute to the society. They, what yeah. they are now is a consumption entity that's just going to start wandering, going. I've I've no I've no money to borrow. That's going to be gone. Like because the banks are switched off and there's I, I'm not allowed to go to work, so it's going to run out. They're all one week away from. You know, yeah, well, I think it, anyway, it, the best of times. It so, would be interesting to see how things do pan out, but I do get a sense that um, that, that we have to be careful we, that we don't underestimate the way that people do think. And most people are thinking the same way that we, we are thinking. No, um, group consciousness. Yeah, well, yeah, well, there group is a group thing. conscious, yeah, group thing. But I think one of the, one of the things that uh, they were also looking at uh, from a psychological perspective is when you get those people, everything kind of goes on the mean side of things, as in, uh, you know, the general averaging out of things. So you, you get some spikes up and some spikes down, but the general population is basically in that sort of middle strata of things. And because we all have certain wants and desires, we tend to balance things out. And I think that that's what they've, they've kind of been looking at from the psychology and the sociology of the way we all work. It's not the fear that, it, it, you know, it's only our fear that creates a monster that's well, out that's there. The thing. Now, that's where we're trying to bring back the word. It's the, it's the fear, the fear of what? The unknown. No, the unknown is not an unknown because we're fearful of it. We're fearful that it's 
it's stronger than we are. It's, it's frightening us. It's over overpower us. It's yeah. it's preventing us from doing something. It's it, that monster is getting legs. It's growing hair. It sounds sounds like I had eight legs a little while. The hair in question is a fur coat. It could be a tarantula. Tarantula turns out the perception is he's okay. He's fine. Don't want to worry about him. It's a little black guy in the corner that can actually jump eight feet and kill you. He's the one that hides in the toilet. The, yeah. But it's it's not the one out of sight. It's which is back to going in our mind. Everything is out of sight. I am fearful based on what's going on at the moment of the of of this monster that could cause the world to stop and a world yeah. order change on the basis of it's actually the uncertainty again. Uncertainty, and it's like yeah. we now. I'm only certain of the space I'm in and the, and the food that's in the pantry and the amount of money left in the bank. But if money doesn't mean anything when the lights switch off and the electricity is gone and all you want is food. But the banks don't work. Then it's barter. It's not money. That's not the piece. You burn your money. Yeah, you know, it's, well, Bitcoin it, it, is gone. <laughs> well, we're we're finding something that's quite interesting because my, my wife had a situation with a, a local company uh, where it's, it's not it's a local place to go and shop, but it's a kind of international shop in itself. And she bought something through PayPal. Um, it was one of these click and collect type ideas. And what happened was that she, in the end, she cancelled the click and collect, but they'd taken her money. They hadn't, and then they didn't pay her back. So she was trying to work out, well, how do I get my money back? And they were being told by the local store that she had to take all her bank details down the shop to prove that they she hadn't been paid already. And she went, but this is nonsense. Surely you've got a way of electronically tracking that sale, and you can see that I didn't get my money back. Now, when she ran the head office, she found that and got that sorted out, which was which is quite useful. But it got us so frustrated. But we're now in a situation where people nowadays are talking about dirty money. And literally, the money in your pocket, the coins, the paper notes, are being considered to be dirty in case you're passing a virus on through it that can infect somebody else. So now it's all gone digital. So this is a great way of actually getting rid of all that kind of money type system that we've had um, and forcing us to just purchase things online. So we are... We're controlled in that way anyway. The main thing is is looking at how to generate an income so that you can keep the bank happy with the digits well, that I, they want to see. I think what you're really see. getting at is you've got to make the monster real give me it or kill it. If it's not real, it's imaginary. Become aware that get it out of your head. If it is real, give it a name and deal with it a bite at a time. Now, you see, that give it a name is, is extremely important because in some of the old cultures, if you didn't have a name for the thing that you were, you couldn't control it, once you've given it a name, you now have a way of controlling and that's great it. Because what you says, I don't know, that to me, I'm just at the hearing, I don't know what I'm frightened of. Yes. So, yes. how am I going to fix it? If I can't put my, f I am afraid to go outside because I might, it might, I might encounter it, but I don't know what it looks like, even if I did. So it's all in my head. It's my own imagination. I'm my own worst enemy. Given a name, it might be Garvin. He's, he might be six foot six, a bit of a monster, Herman Monster, gargantuan, a gargoyle. But he's over there. You can deal with it. You can bite it one slice at a time. Well, let, let's just just before we do finish. Um, what were your thoughts before we started to use the camera and the microphone? How did you feel about all that technology before we got it? It was a monstrous task to get from A to B. I now I think I'm at C and D. It's, 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 my imagination is more powerful than any you know, film out there, and it will come up with much worse scenarios than, 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 than the universe can. So therefore, it's... A lot, life is a lot simpler than what's going on in most of our heads. Don't, most of it's imaginary. Most of it's a monster. Let's just deal with the real and, and enjoy that. Because, and if you want a bit of fantasy imaginary, go to the cinema. And if we get a bit of alien thrown in and it becomes a little bit more real than imaginary, we'll deal with it then. But until then, it's E.T. meets alien. And the key thing is not to overthink it and turn it into a monster. Nope. Shrink it down. Make it small. Make it a cuddly toy. That's it. Like the oh. sock things that we were looking at before. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Thanks for listening to this episode. We look forward to entertaining you in the next episode. Thanks for listening and watching. All the best. And just check under the bed and in the cupboard just in case. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.